Hey everyone, welcome back. Whew, how are you guys doing? I'm doing better. It has been about 24 hours and Graham has not had a seizure. So thank you all for um, your wonderful comments, your good vibes, and most of all, your prayers. We appreciate it from the Wilson family home to your home. Thank you so much. He had 48 hours of on and off. Usually it's about a 10 day span that we go through like a cycle. So I know that, you know, um, wiping the dust off my jar here. I know we are not out of the cycle yet. Uh, we have a full moon coming up in two days and that definitely affects uh, neurological issues with my son with autism and my husband with epilepsy. So we have some challenges to um, get ready for, but we can do it and um, we'll just do what we have to do to get through it. So anyway, I want to talk about seasonal stockpile. So that's a different term. I don't know that most people use that term, but a um, couple of different seasons that I want to talk about. So here in New Jersey, we have winter, spring, summer, and fall. Um, not every state has four seasons, distinct four seasons, and not every country you know, around the world has that. But here in New Jersey, we have a cold, snowy winter. We have beautiful spring, uh, nice weather, and uh, you know, transitioning into summer, which is usually hot, and beach weather, we're at the Jersey Shore area. And then we transition to what we're into now is fall. Early fall is kind of in the middle between warm days. We had 80 degrees two days ago, and today was 52. So, you know, big difference in temperatures, and then we'll slide right into winter. So that's the seasons that we have in New Jersey. So adapt my four seasons to the seasons that you have where you are, and you'll understand more as we chat and look at some items. But also the seasons of where you are in life. So you might be at a season now where your kids are off to college and nobody's home, you know, so you don't need as much or you need different things. You might be in a season like my mom where she just lost my dad and um, a lot of the foods that my mom would purchase and the meals she would cook would be for my dad's, you know, what he liked for my dad. And now that it's just my mom, she's in a new season. And I said to her, mom, what do you like to eat? So the other day she went and bought raviolis. She liked raviolis. So then buy raviolis. You know, buy the things that you need. So you might be in a season of you've, you know, you've lost someone or possibly divorced or the kids moved on or empty nester. You might find yourself alone for whatever reason. And so you are in a new season yourself. So what do I mean by seasonal stockpile? Well, I'm going to say where I am right now, where um, we are in a season, and I talked about this a few um, videos ago on we don't have my dad anymore, so my parents are not here visiting. Um, my mom can't drive, so she won't get to our house. My two older kids have moved. They used to live across the street, and now they live about 25 minutes away, so they're not here on the regular so that's now four less people in our household on the regular eating, not necessarily living here, but eating. So we went from seven to 10 people with extra family and some of that family has also moved to three people. And out of those three people, it's really only me and Graham for the most part. Gavin has a regimented diet of what he eats. So I buy those things and that's it. So I'm in a new season myself. Not only am I going from fall to winter, but I'm in a new season with who I'm feeding and why I'm feeding them and all that good stuff. So let's talk about seasonal. Okay, so we're going from fall to winter. So now some of this stuff here, I will get complaints and people will say, stop eating canned goods. Okay, there's a point to that, but I will also make my point. We will also have some things here that you don't necessarily do, like, have the ability to, and so on. So everything I'm showing you is my stockpile, my season of life. But take these ideas 
and adapt them, adapt them to where you are in life. So whether you're a family of one, a family of two to six, whatever the case might be, the size of the family, the needs of the family. I have special needs. I have a son with autism. So his special needs not only are in, um, you know, learning disabilities and things like that, but they eat differently. They like different things. They have a regiment of things. So I have to adapt my stockpile to suit the needs of that. So let's look at some of this stuff. So again, we're adapting now into the fall winter season. So what can we do to transition? What kind of things should we have in our seasonal stockpile? So some of this is fun, some of this is necessary. So we're gonna have a combination. Let me show you something like hot chocolate. So we're transitioning to fall nights, having bonfires and um, you know things like that outside. And you might just wanna sit outside on a cool evening, even on a cold, cooler cold evening and put a blanket on. We have a chimney and we can just light a fire in there and have some hot chocolate dead of winter. It's snowing outside. You're home. You want to watch a movie. You want comfort. Make some hot chocolate. Just as an extra alternative drink, you run out of coffee, you run out of tea, whatever the case might be, it doesn't hurt to have some hot chocolate on hand. You can make homemade hot chocolate if you want. I know I have some viewers that are avid um, make your own natural, make your own everything from scratch type people. And hey, thumbs up to you, that's great. I do make my own homemade hot chocolate, but I don't have it right now. And this was a dollar. So I went to the Dollar Tree and I picked this up. It goes in the pantry. We're not huge hot chocolate drinkers, but once in a while we do enjoy it. So for now, this will work. So what are some other things you can have? I have, if you can see that, a jar of dehydrated peas. So you say, well, why would you have that? Well, a couple of things. One is, this was a bag of frozen peas that I dehydrated. Um, it saves room in my freezer. So if I want to stockpile other things in my freezer, I can dehydrate vegetables and have them for soups and stews and things like that. And I wouldn't necessarily, I mean, I could. I could rehydrate them and use them as a side dish. That's fine. But usually something like when you dehydrate, you would do in a casserole or a soup or stew. They're perfect for that, perfect. So that's what I did is I wanted to save some room in my freezer and I dehydrated these. I dehydrated these probably March or April of 2020. So these are about a year and a half old. I've used about half of it. I still have more in here and it's great. It's great. Now, some of you might be saying, well, I don't dehydrate. I don't know how, I don't have a dehydrator. Okay, you can use your oven to dehydrate. We're not going to get into that tonight. But it might be an option for you. Maybe it's something you just never thought about. And maybe you should think about it. If you don't have room in your freezer, you can dehydrate. That might be an option. So why else would I dehydrate certain things? Certain fruits and certain vegetables that you can't get necessarily good stuff in the... Um, winter season. It might be nice to have, you know, things from your own garden, maybe your tomatoes, you can dehydrate your peppers and things like that. If you're not, I like to can, not everybody's into canning. So again, you can put things in your freezer, but if you're limited on space, some of you live in maybe an apartment or a studio and you just don't have a regular size house where you can fit a freezer. Maybe you can't afford to get an extra freezer. So these are options that you can do where you don't have to use the little freezer on top of your refrigerator that has just enough room for your meats and maybe a few things of bread, but you can dehydrate some of your vegetables. So that might be an idea. And also that you can get good fresh vegetables that you dehydrate. Some of the things you get, if you go to get produce, sometimes in the winter, it's looking a little funny. So that's just an option, just, just an idea, like I said, just ideas. Okay, other ideas with that would be seasonal things like this is mandarin oranges. I just grabbed some stuff, applesauce. Random fruits. Do you wanna eat canned fruit all the time? No, absolutely not. Now I make my homemade applesauce when I go apple picking. 
I will freeze my homemade applesauce. I've not canned it. Um, that would be something I could do. I've never, I've just never canned my applesauce. I always froze it. But you can't always get good produce in the winter, at least where I am. You can get out, you can get produce year round, but it's not, you know, we've gotten grapes and we went, ooh, there's no taste. We've gotten watermelon in January and it does, watermelon doesn't belong in January. It just has no taste. You can get apples and there's just no taste. Now I would love to have a root cellar and go apple picking and store them. Someday that's my dream. I don't have a root cellar right now. And you're probably, some of you might be laughing going, I live in a high rise apartment. I live in the city. We don't have root cellars. No, not everybody can, but you can do this and you can do something like this. Now, why would I recommend you get canned fruit? Well, a couple of reasons. One is if you can't get fresh fruit that tastes good, something like this for an applesauce as an alternative to fresh fruit, we're not talking you do this, you know, seven days a week, 365 days a year. I'm talking for a season, just for a season. Now, maybe a couple of things. You can't afford to go buy the produce right now. It's expensive, but you have things like this in your stockpile. It can hold you over for a little bit until you can afford to get fresh produce. The produce right now is not very good. Instead of winter, pull out your can produce, your canned, your whether it's corn or your canned potatoes or your canned fruits. I'm not asking you to do this on the regular every day. No, of course not. You don't want to do that. You want to have as much fresh as you can, but there has to be an alternative. There needs to be something, as my husband would say, you need to fall back on something. When you can't get it, you have something like this. This is also great in recipes. You can use this in place of oil. So you want to consider the season that you're in. You know what? You might be in a season if you can't afford much. Maybe your paycheck is smaller or whatever the case might be. You've got extra bills. Christmas is coming. But you have a lot of applesauce. So you don't need to go run out and buy oil if you're going to bake. You can use applesauce. So just some ideas along that line. What are some other things for the season? Something like this. My son had requested this and they had them on sale at our grocery store for a dollar a can. Is this the perfect, perfect spaghetti kind of, you know, nutritional? No, it's not. If the power were to go out, I have a pop top on here and I can eat this right out of the can. Would it be better warm? Yes. Let's say I have no alternative cooking. I, I don't have a way of doing that. I could eat this. I've got some protein in it. I've got a carb in it. It's enough to sustain me for however long for the next, you know, little bit to get me through. Maybe you have the um, power didn't go out, but you just want something, you know, a quick and easy dinner. You get home from work. It's, you know, dark outside. It's five o'clock. We're in that season. You don't feel like cooking. You could take a can of this and also a can of green beans and maybe some applesauce and have a dinner. Is it fresh? Is it nutritional? Okay, it's not fresh. Is it nutritional? Yes. Is it the perfect nutrition? No. It's a season. We're talking seasonal stockpiling. Things that are for a season. Whether it's a season of winter, spring, summer, fall. It's a season of you have no money. It's a season of just you can't get out to get other things. Your stockpile is should be designed to fall back on. Your stockpile should be something you start storing things up. So in the future, when you need things, you go shopping in your stockpile. And when you hit a season of the power goes out or you're in a season of you can't get out or you're in a season you can't afford it or you're in a season of and you fill in the blank, you'll have things to fall back on that you don't need to go and worry about what am I going to do if you got stuff like this, you'll be good. When the season changes... You know, as the song said, when the, sun come, when the sun comes out tomorrow, when you can get a little bit more money and when you can get to the store and when the produce is better, of course, buy your fresh produce, stock up on stuff like that. Learn how you can freeze fresh produce. How do you blanch it? How do you freeze it? There's all kinds of things you can do. Every season has a purpose. And sometimes you just have to learn to live where you're at 
and live with what you have and do with what you have. My mom was a big one where if we couldn't do this, okay, we'll do it that way. No questions asked. You just, you just learn to do it. My husband's the same way. He'll just say, well, it can't go left. We go right. And we just make it work. Another thing would be something like this, a can of beef stew. We're in a season, maybe the, pr the price of meats have gone up. They really, really have gone up. Maybe you're in a season you can't afford to go buy meat, but you can buy a dollar can of beef stew and maybe you can get some fresh carrots and fresh potatoes and maybe fresh corn and you could add some fresh produce to this. Or maybe you have a can of beef stew and you get a bag of salad and you have a salad as a side dish. You kind of have to compromise. You can afford a can of a dollar beef stew and then you go and you get maybe a small bag of lettuce and especially if you're a family of one, maybe you don't want to buy a whole head of lettuce and this, that, and the next thing to make a salad. Well, you can buy a bag of, you know, a smaller bag of salad and um, you can get that for two or three dollars and probably get, you know, two, three, maybe even four side dishes of salad out of that. So that might be an option. Things like this is uh, chunky beef vegetable soup. So tis the season. Winter's coming. Oh, you want that soup? Maybe you're not into making homemade soup. I make soup from scratch. I freeze it. I've canned it. Um, I give it to others. That's one thing I am very good at is my soups. They Everybody that eats my soups always say, oh, can you make me more? And um, so I make homemade soup, but I don't always feel like that either. I come home for lunch and a lot of times I feel like maybe a cup of soup and a quick tuna sandwich or something like that. So you know what? Do something like this. You can't afford much. You can spend a dollar on a can of soup. This has carrots and potatoes in it and it has meat in it. You can then, again, you can add fresh produce to it, do a side, of, uh, side salad soup and salad. You can put this over pasta, do something like that to bulk it up if you want and add your produce to that. There's lots of alternatives and other ways you can do things for the season. Now the winter's coming, so oh, you know the comfort of having soup. You don't make homemade? Get yourself a can of soup. Great lunch, inexpensive, dollar a can. Not a bad deal. Things like this, the season's coming up, tis the season. We've got the holidays coming up. So maybe you wanna start stockpiling. What would you stockpile? Cans of pumpkin and pumpkin um, spice and uh, nutmeg and uh, cloves and things like that you would use for your pies and for your baking. Cranberry sauce to put on the side of your turkey. Um, stuffing and um, breadcrumbs maybe and th you know things like that things too like think through for the season that you're going into what are the regular type things that you like to make maybe in the winter is a time you like to make a big pot of meatballs you know that you can just have that I used to do that one week I'd make a pot of meatballs and the next week I do a pot of sausage in a nice red gravy or a red sauce and I'd stick that in the refrigerator and I could just warm that up every night of the week I might have it over, meatballs over spaghetti one night. The next night, I might just have meatballs on a plate with a side salad. The next night, I make, might make meatball sandwiches with some roasted broccoli. So I would turn that meatball into four, five, six, seven meals, but do it in a bit of a different way. But I need to stockpile, make sure I have my breadcrumbs and my Parmesan cheese. And then I have ground beef in the freezer and I have eggs in the refrigerator and things like that. So, you know, maybe do something like that. Maybe, you know, stock up on spaghetti sauce and stock up on cans of tomatoes. Cans of tomatoes you can use any time of the year. Jersey tomatoes are the best. They are so good, but we can only get them for a season. I used to can, when I first got married, I would just can tomatoes and I made stewed tomatoes and I'd have jars and jars and jars of it. And I would turn that into a pasta sauce. I'd turn it into whatever I needed, added it to a soup and so on. I love macaroni and cheese with a can of stewed tomatoes mixed in it. Oh my goodness, it's so good. And I like doing that, but I can't get Jersey tomatoes year round. It's for a season. So now I'm in the season of, okay, I need to go to get canned tomatoes. That's not a bad thing. We can do that. It's okay. 
It's for a season. What are some other things? Okay. I picked this up. I got this tonight. Some of you, I can just feel the vibes already of you complaining. How can you eat that? It's popcorn, people. It's popcorn in a bag. Do I eat it every night? No. I don't think I've eaten this probably in two or three years. I was in the mood the other night for popcorn, and we have no popcorn. I'm not going to buy a bag of popcorn. We very rarely eat it. I was in the mood. I got three bags for $1 at the Dollar Tree. I was in the mood for a Christmas movie. I was in the mood for a bag of popcorn. So I'm going to pick that up. Maybe that's something just to keep. Maybe if you're a family of one, listen, why buy a big bag of something? You don't have the room to store it. It's not something you're going to eat on the regular. But something like this, you know, to comfort yourself. You come home from work. Maybe you're feeling down that night or kind of lonely. And you could put on a movie or put on a video at home with Lynn Wilson. Yeah. And sit down and make yourself some popcorn and grab a nice, you know, cup of tea or a cup of coffee or, you know, a glass of water, whatever, and have a bowl of popcorn. And it doesn't have to be a lot, a small bowl, a little bit of comfort goes a long way. Another thing with comfort food would be something like this, macaroni and cheese. This is not just for kids. This is for a kid at any age. You could be 99 years old and you enjoy some macaroni and cheese. So this again would be for a season. Do I make my own homemade macaroni and cheese? Absolutely. I have the best recipe in the whole world. I shared that a number of videos back on a new macaroni and cheese recipe new to me, Aunt Agnes's macaroni and cheese. It's delicious. It's great. Sometimes the box comes in handy. Take this. Best way to do it. Adult friendly. Make this. Add a can of stewed tomatoes and add a can of peas or your dehydrated fresh peas. You can add something like that. You have a package of frozen peas. You can add that in here. What a great meal that makes. You've got your carb, you've got your tomatoes, which is really your fruit. You've got your peas, you've got your vegetable. And I love that with a side salad. That like to me is like the perfect meal at night. I find that not so much the fall, but definitely the winter, the end of the fall into the rest of the winter. These are the kind of meals that we enjoy we're not big into let's make a roast and all that kind of stuff. We'll do just something simple like this. Okay, what other things do we have here? So things to think about to stockpile for the season. Here is an option. I have not tried it yet. I bought it. I do need to try it out. Egg replacer. So you can't afford to get eggs this week. Okay, you can go to the Dollar Tree and spend a dollar. They've had them as low as 24 cents a dozen. I don't even know how they can afford to only charge 24 cents a dozen at Aldi. The other week I went, they were 69 cents for the dozen. I'm thinking to myself, how do you get 12 eggs for 69 cents, the packaging and all the rest? I don't even know how it pays for itself. But anyway, that's cheap. But then other times you go, like if I go to my local grocery store, we're looking at two, three, four, fifty. A dozen, no lie, $4.50 for, we're not talking organic brown eggs or anything like that. We're talking plain eggs. My grocery store is a ripoff when it comes to eggs, but I can't always get to Aldi. Maybe I can't even afford a dollar this week. This is something that you can get and stockpile an egg replacer. This package is an equivalent to 34 eggs. It was $3.75. You know what? You might want to consider it. So you're in the middle of the winter and you want to make pancakes. You look out the window and there's ice on the road or it's cold and you just don't want to go out. Oh, I really want pancakes, but I need an egg. There you go. You have your egg replacer. Another idea would be, tis the season, we're changing seasons, to get your G clarified butter. I buy this at, um, where do I get this? I've gotten one at Lidl, and I know I've gotten it at Aldi. They go on sale quite often. This butter is shelf-stable forever. So you can make your own G butter. I think that's how you pronounce it, G. If not, you can, you know, figure it out on your own. You can make your own. There's certain things I can't be bothered doing. This would be one of them. I'd rather buy it. But this butter is shelf-stable forever. 
So you'll say, so why would you get something like this? Well, number one, prices of butter fluctuate. One week they're really good, the next week they're really not. This would be something I'd keep on hand to have that I wouldn't use on the regular, but if I ran out of butter, I have it. Or if I need a quick little bit of butter to put in the frying pan because I'm making some eggs, here you go. You run out of butter, you have no alternative, you've got this in the pantry, in your stockpile. It doesn't have to go in the refrigerator. Let's not forget our milk, our shelf stable milk. Why would you get something like this? Same thing, prices of milk have gone up, you can't afford it this week. But you know what, I stockpiled this. These are a dollar at the Dollar Tree, these are $5 on Amazon, other places have it anywhere from three to five dollars. So stock up on this. Go, this one is good until March of 2022. I have some of these that are good until December of 2022. So March of 2022, make a note of it, make sure I use it. So we drink organic milk on the regular, and I like to save that for drinking in a glass or putting in our cereal. But if I'm going to do baking, I would use this. Um, if I'm going to do a recipe, instant potatoes or mashed potatoes or a casserole or anything, even for the, you know, for, for our dog, we give him uh, milk on occasion just to keep his digestion going, keeping things moving along, as my husband would say, that I can use something like this. So consider stockpiling milk. You run out of milk. It's one of those things you're like, oh man, how many times we need milk for baking and cooking and so on. So have some shelf stable milk for the season that you're in. Don't forget, have water for every season. So we have hurricane season coming up, power outages in the winter and so on. You want to have some type of alternative water, whether it's small water bottles, the big jugs of water, Whatever you can fit and whatever you can store and, you know, for the size family that you are, consider what you need and just start stockpiling those items as you can afford to do it. So again, the season is here. The holidays are here. Stockpile some sugar. And I did make a note of this when I got it the other day that I used to buy five pounds of sugar. This is four pounds of sugar. And I thought, interesting, you know, packaging is a whole pound less, a little bit smaller. It wasn't a ton more money than you would have paid for the five pounds, but you are one pound less. So they might not have raised the price, but they've lowered the size. Same thing with flour. It is the season, so stock up on flour. And this has sat in my freezer probably for um, about two months, so... It, this is something that I want to start using fairly soon so it doesn't expire. Now, don't buy 50 pounds of flour if you're a family of one and you don't use flour on the regular. But flour can be for making bread, for making pancakes, for making waffles, for making scones, for making biscuits, for making cakes, all kinds of stuff. You need flour, you need sugar, you need milk, you need eggs, you need butter. So think of these things, you need water, Think of your season. What season are you in? Your seasonal stockpile. Are you in a season of the weather is changing and you need to shift gears? I would not necessarily go out and buy a bunch of cans of soup in the summer because you know you don't want a hot meal or a hot bowl of soup in the middle of the summer. But in the winter, fall, absolutely I want that. Get some chicken noodle soup. You're not feeling so good. You got the aches, you're getting a cold, whatever. And you want some chicken noodle soup. If you don't make homemade, you know, get Old Faithful Campbell's chicken noodle soup or something like that. Get yourself some comfort food from the middle of the winter. Some comfort snacks, things like that. Some canned alternatives for fruit when you can't get the fresh produce that you would like to have on hand. So I hope this is helpful just to trigger your thinking about what should I have in my seasonal stockpile? What season are you in? Are you in a season of change in terms of number of people in your life? Are you in a season of change of maybe financial status? And you might need to maybe not buy the prime rib this week and get the chopped meat and maybe not get some of those extras and so on. And you should always have a stockpile. You should always have a few extras on hand. 
minimum should be a week's worth of food. At the least, you should have a week's worth of food for yourself and for every member of your family. Two weeks would be ideal, a month is even better, six months is better, and a full year eventually, if you can. Not everyone can afford that, not everyone can fit that. That would be if you best case scenario. But listen, the best case scenario is at least one extra item in your stockpile at a time. You can't afford to start a stockpile, yes you can. You can't afford, you don't think you can, Yes, you can. I have no room. Find room. You're talking about food. Food is something we can't live without. We can't live without food and we can't live without water. You can live without that extra piece of furniture that you could take out and put a little shelf up and make a stockpile. You can store things under your bed. I don't like doing that, but you could store them in plastic bins. You can store them under the couch. There's ways to store but you must have food on hand. Power goes out, you run out of money, something happens, car breaks down, you need to have food. And make sure you're thinking of seasonal stuff. What do I need for the new season coming up? I'm in a change of life. I'm in a change of whatever. And don't always just feel like you have to have the best of the best. Listen, would you like all organic, fresh produce and a cow sitting in the backyard so you don't have to have shelf-stable milk. Who wouldn't? Who would love to have chickens and cows and everything else and have everything fresh? We can't all do that. So you do alternatives. You might have to get powdered eggs. Maybe that's your alternative. You might have to get shelf-stable milk, canned butter, dehydrated peas, canned fruit, canned soup, and so on. It's okay. It's only for a season. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it triggered some thoughts of, you know what? I never thought about that. I'm in a season. I'm only a family of one now. So I need to start thinking about what do I like to eat? Maybe you have all these things from somebody that lived with you and you're like, they're not here anymore and I don't eat this stuff. Share it with a friend. Give it to the food bank. If you have extra canned goods and they're not outdated, please give to your local food bank. They need the food as well to share with others. It's always good to do for others. Thanks so much for coming by. Hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you and we'll see you on the next video.